These are the notes for 2.4. We need to first finish filling out the vocab on the front. Um, equivalent inequalities are inequalities that have the same solution. Okay. Compound inequalities is now we're going to take two inequalities and put them kind of together, okay? So um, it's an inequality formed by joining two inequalities with the words and or the word or. Okay, I know this says or or, but um, that's what makes something a compound inequality, and we're going to do some examples of that. So if you turn to 2.4, it has this at the top, but we're going to start down here, or we're going to fill out down here. Um, so 2.4 is all about solving these compound inequalities. So you need to solve them and graph them and then write it in inter I'm sorry, in interval notation. Um, so this one tells me a number u is less than seven and greater than three. So that tells me u is less than seven and it tells me u is greater than three. So it gives me these two inequalities and I'm gonna put them together as one compound inequality. So I like to write the bigger number on the right, so I'm just gonna leave this inequality the same, u less than seven. Now, the bigger part of my symbol, it open towards that u, so u is bigger than three, So, but I want three written first here, so I'm gonna switch this. If I flip it, I have to flip the symbol. So now I have three is less than u, less than seven, and that still works with this, saying u is bigger than three. Three less than u means the same thing. And then this says u is less than seven and u is less than seven. So my endpoints here are three and seven. They do not equal, so they're gonna have open circles. And then if I were to graph this, this tells me u is bigger than three, so it's gonna go this way and u is less than seven goes that way. So these two graphs will overlap here in the middle, in between these. So that is the graph, the solution for that inequality, okay? I do get in the habit of marking with like I did with the pencil very lightly which direction things are going because sometimes they might go the same direction but they only overlap in a certain place. So it's always good to make note and then we want to write this in interval notation. So on the left end point, I'm at three. On the right end point, I'm at seven. It does not equal three, so it's a parenthesis, and it does not equal seven, so it's gonna be another parenthesis. So there's the interval notation for this inequality. And now if I write the one over here. A number C is no less than so that means it can't be less than, so it's gonna be greater than, but could equal it, so um, negative 1.5. But then it says C is less than a 5.3, okay? So I'm gonna leave that C is less than 5.3 and flip this other one, so it'll be less than or equal to a negative 1.5. So on the graph, now I don't care where you put these, the smaller number needs to go on the left side, the bigger number needs to go on the right. I'm not really having you mark your intervals here, so we'll just call this good. We know at 1.5 it can equal it, so that is going to be a closed circle. It does not equal 5.3, so it's an open circle. C is greater than 1.5, and C is less than 5.3, so that is right in between. And then my interval notation, I have a negative 1.5 as the left boundary, and I have 5.3 as the right boundary. 
it can equal 1.5 so that gets the bracket but it doesn't equal 5.3 so that does not get the bracket it gets a parenthesis okay if I come down to number four it's already written in my compound inequality notation here um, but I draw my lines like I did before when we just had an inequality but now so now I have two lines X is not by itself in the center and I want it by itself so I'm going to add three to all three parts because this is the same thing as saying four is less than X minus three as well as the inequality as X minus three is less than or equal to seven so if I solve this one I add three to both sides if I solve this one I add three to both sides so I'm just doing all of it at once so that gives me seven the symbol stays the same those cancel so I'm left with X this symbol stays the same and I have ten okay so I have um, one of my endpoints is seven and one is ten cannot equal seven can equal ten so that's filled in tells me X is greater than seven less than ten so that is in between and then my interval notation the left endpoint is seven right endpoint is ten can't equal seven but it can equal ten so the ten gets the bracket parenthesis around seven okay number four same thing I still have these two inequality symbols but I don't have my variable by itself in the middle so I know I have to divide by a negative five but that means I divide all of them by negative five because I'm dividing by a negative, my symbols will flip. So 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3. Now I am left with G, and this gives me a positive 2. So I know I have the boundary of negative 3 and 2. It's a closed circle at negative 3 because it can equal it, but it's also a closed circle at 2. Now, g is greater than the uh, than negative 3. It's less than 2, so it is in between. And my interval are both brackets. Okay, on the next page, um, this way they were all together. Things were going towards each other, but like I said, it doesn't always do that. Now, this time on this page, it has the word or in between two inequalities, okay? They are graphed on the same graph because it can be this or it can be this. Now we're going to solve those separately. So let's just do this first one here on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left. So I need to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 4. So I have x, the symbol does not change, and I have negative 2. All right, so that one's solved. Now I need to solve this one on the right. And pretend the z is supposed to be an x. I'm sorry about that. So to get x by itself, I need to divide by negative 3. So I'm going to have x. Now divide it by a negative, so I flip my sign, and I have 9. All right, so when I plot those, I'm going to have a negative 2 and a 9. And they're both open circles. Now, this one tells me x is less than negative 2 and tells me x is greater than 9. Now, these don't overlap at all. So, since it's an or, not the word and, I have both of those graphs. Okay? If it said and, they have to overlap in some place, and that is the solution. If it uses the word or, it does not. Okay? Um, all right, so now if I write my interval notation, I have two graphs. So I'm going to just start with this one first. On the left side of this graph, it's going to negative infinity, and it stops at a negative 2 on the right. Well, infinity, we always put parentheses. It can't equal negative 2, so we're going to put the parentheses. But we have this one here. So in our notation, we're going to use this u right there it doesn't have the line on the right side it's just a curve okay so it'll be this interval or it'll be this interval and it'll be nine and it goes to infinity in parentheses around both because it does not equal the nine 
Okay, so that's interval notation when you have the word or in between. Okay, number six. Okay, let's do this one on the left. I need to subtract six. So I get 2x is less than 4. Divide by 2. I'm going to get x is less than 2. On this other one, I'm only doing it in a different color to keep it separated so my work doesn't blend together here. So I'm going to subtract 7. So I have negative x is less than or equal to negative 5. To get rid of that negative in front, I'm going to divide by negative 1. So I have x, now I divide it by a negative, so I flip my symbol, and it's going to be 5. Alright, so at 2 and 5, 2 is an open circle, 5 is a closed circle. This tells me 2 is, or x is less than 2, and it does tell me it's greater than 5, so this or worked out. Okay, so an interval would be a negative infinity to 2 and then bracket 5 to infinity parentheses. Alright, so I want to do number 12. So go ahead and skip all the way down to number 12. <clears throat> okay, now this has the word and in between. So the solution will be where they overlap. But this is one of them. I wanted to show you why I marked that, those arrows in pencil. So Here's this one, I need to subtract 5. Negative n less than or equal to 4. I need to divide both by negative 1. So I'm going to get n, flip my symbol, is greater than or equal to negative 4. Then for this one, I just need to subtract 3 from both sides. n will be greater than 5. Now, I'm going to put these on the graph in pencil first to show you why it's always good to do this. So at negative 4, this says closed circle, and then at 5, it's an open circle. Well, it says n is greater than negative 4, so it goes that way. But it also says n is greater than 5. So these arrows both go to the right forever, so the only place they intersect is after that open circle so we have an open circle at 5 because this one cannot equal it so it has to stay open circle even though this one can equal it but they would only overlap here so the rest of this graph isn't even part of my, my solution that is the solution um, and so for interval notation I would put 5 to infinity is the graph because it says and so it has to be where they both work now for number seven I'm just going to get you started okay we have two inequalities written here I'm going to leave this left side the same as well as my symbol and I'm going to distribute this one-third so I have a one-third times six x which is the same thing as saying six x divided by three and that gives me two x Plus, and then I have 1 third times 24, which is the same thing as saying 24 divided by 3, which is 8. Leave this symbol the same, and you have 12. All right, and then you finish solving. It's two steps, so you're going to subtract 8 from everything. Then you divide 2 from everything, and then you have your, your inequality that you can graph and write your interval notation. So for the practice for this, you're going to do 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 13 and 14. Each one's worth three points. You have to write your, your um, inequalities, you have to graph them, and you have to write the interval notation. Each thing is worth one point.